Good morning and welcome to how to prepare, how to cut out a, a cricket wicket. So if you see here, that's the wicket for our upcoming game. And skip to, this is the wicket I've identified. Ideally, you should identify the wickets you're going to cut out and what day you're going to cut them out, sort of before the day you decide to cut them out. Some sort of planning to make sure you don't get wickets right alongside each other. If you imagine they're playing on that one, run up and down, they'd actually be running up and down on this one, which is not really what you want. Why it's soft and you're trying to protect it from the studs. So basically, where do we start with this? Well, I already knew which one I was going to cut out. Um, I've just taken this down. Um, first, cut, first sort of cut. It's usually cut with a square mower. 10 to 12 mil is what I've cut this out at. Um, what I had to do first though was identify the uh, the width. So if you look up there, I've got two pegs at the end of the wicket there, 10 foot. So I aim for them and come straight back down. Tend to use a mark on the mower. Let's see that, that mark there. Sort of a mark there. And then I aim up there towards them pegs. Now I'm going to use very basic equipment here because most groundsmen don't have access to verti-cutting machines so but a lot have access to this lawnman which really is a really basic bit of kit most groundsmen could have they're probably about 800 pound but really for you know how many years you'll get out of them they're so well made real good investment so this side so what i've done i've cut it once the wicket up and down the straight it's the same line so we're not striping the wicket um now you can see the rake there if you when you use the rake Zoom in a bit there. That's pretty good, pretty aggressive for that. It really gets the uh, gets the stalky bits of grass up, the coarse bits of grass, because you don't really want circular grass or patches of cir circular patches of grass. So you want to get them up and cut, and then because what I do afterwards, I'll come along and cut these with the mower. So what you don't really want to be doing with the uh, verticutter is impacting the soil because you can end up taking lumps out of it. So you have to do it. Just at the right time. If you do it when it's too dry, the surface late in prep, more chance of you sort of scalping, taking chunks out your surface. But that's where the brush comes in. I prefer the brush side myself. I'd prefer to keep working away with the brush. Um, to show you, there's a there's another side there. So you just turn that round, turn it upside down, flips over, and the brush is a lot more, a lot more gentle. Um, to show you around here, the stripper done. So, you know, do that, I don't want to say every day, but every time you cut, push the grass up, cut it at your 10 mil, um, gradually reducing it down to your match height, which can be, which can, well, can range from eight to five mil, six mil, something like that. Um, another useful technique for this brush is after you've rolled, stands the grass back up, exposes the soil, helps the plant dry a bit quicker so it's a bit of a trick um, base of plants quite white it's got a white sort of sheath around it so if you can get that brushed up that really helps so yeah so basically I've cut it I've raked it and I'm going to cut it again um, so the key thing then is watering well this has been out in the rain so I have no watering to do with this because it's got moisture to depth but how do I know if I've got you know three four inches or whatever I want in there which ideally I like to have three to four inches or I use one of these corers and the tops broken off it's like a t-piece you knock these in with something like this an impact hammer and you get out a core like this now all we're looking for is that it molds but that past the seam it's got that means that when you roll and I say there's moisture there down to down to three four inches probably a little bit more there um, you can also use a pin not quite as accurate there's a pin, push a pin in there we go to the full depth stick your finger near the bottom your thumb near the bottom pull it out and again it's giving you an indication of the sort of moisture and also the, the compaction in there that there is so the next thing for this would be a roll um, Let's just have a look at this surface, a little test I do. So I push me uh, thumbs and fingers on the surface, I turn it round and as you can see, they're damp, they're wet. So, 
Um, so if you're going to put a two ton roller on this one half, whatever, two, whatever ton you've got, and you imagine my, my fingers are pushing up moisture, what that, that, that roller is going to do, it's going to bring up a lot of moisture. So for, for me, I'd wait till my, my fingers are 90, you know, 95% dry before I even thought about putting a roller on this. Um, we can't be compressed water. We need the soil to be drained of water. So those air particles that we that are created where that water is sitting, when we roll it, they're pushed down, and as and we we consolidate the uh, the soil profile. Now, at club level, pitch prep is depends on the time of year, but probably two weeks early season, maybe seven to ten days, um, sort of later in the season when it gets hotter. Yeah, everything's gradual, so, but this is, bait, yeah, so, now if, if, say, we hadn't had the rain, or hadn't had that moisture to depth, what I'd recommend you do with this is basically watering. So you water with a hand, handheld, um, something, try and get an even coverage, if not sprinklers. Um, handheld is more, more accurate, um, but, you know, it takes a lot of time. You can always use your domes or a sheet. So you can water, flip it over if it's a hot day, stops evaporation, helps the water get into a bit of depth. Anyway, I hope that's uh, helpful, how to prepare a cricket wicket.